that he's <laughs> one of the best-selling children's authors in the country. Uh, here to tell us all about the stage adaptation of his most popular book, Grandpa's Great Escape, and the possible return of Little Britain. We'll come to that later. David Williams is here. My hello, goodness hello. me. I mean, you know, this is... It's all pretty successful, really, isn't it? Well, it's very, very pleasing. Yeah, kids seem to like the books. Um, now we're moving on to stage adaptations. Yeah. And we've got one of Grandpa's Great Escape mm. that I did on television with Sir Tom Courtney and Jennifer Saunders. Now Nigel Plano, one of my comedy heroes, Neil from The Young Ones. Yeah. Probably a little before your time. I know, but I know what you're talking about, okay. though. OK. He, uh, <laughs> he's playing Grandpa, and it's an arena show because the, the, the book is involves the stealing of a Spitfire from mm -hmm. the Imperial War Museum and the use of a World War tank to smash through the wall. So we, I wanted the show to be as big as possible because I think kids who read the book, they kind yeah. of want it to be as they imagine it. So, so we're touring arenas starting in Birmingham. You've got a Spitfire. We've You've got, got a, a tank. Spitfire and we, we, it's basically over Christmas and New Year for about a couple of weeks oh, touring brilliant. around arenas. I mean, you yeah. do, um, because I think the, the children love these books and children have such a vivid imagination and so they read them and the stories come alive in their heads anyway. So then to actually make it real in front of them, you have to go mm. big. Yeah, I think so. And I, I'm really glad it's different because I've also got a, a production of The Boy in the Dress at Stratford Bay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm also uh, selling my fridge freezer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I know, but I just like, if you've got more than one show, you sort of want them to be different. The Boy in the Dress is very much a musical, but this yeah. is something different. I wanted to have a sense, when I was a kid, I don't know if you ever did that. You didn't grow up in the UK, did you? Yeah. You did, OK. Um, I, uh, I thought you were from New Zealand or something. Four years. Four years. Yeah. When I was 17. Um, did you ever go to the Royal Tournament? No. No, it was this incredible thing where, where basically... The... I hosted it once, though. Oh. When I, when so you didn't go, but you it? hosted it. Well, I mean, I, I was not as a kid. That not as a kid. Right, I did it okay. as an adult. But I, I wanted a sense of that because I used to love that as a kid. Basically, it was when the armed forces did put on a kind of show. So it would I be, see, they'd, I see, They'd I put see. a cannon together and there'd be tanks. All together. Right. I loved all that as a kid, so mm. I thought I wanted to get a flavour of that. And your grandfather, am I right, was in the RAF? Yeah, he was, and there's pictures of him actually in the back of the book of oh. Grandpa's Great Escape. So he uh, he was very proud of his, uh, of his time in the RAF. He wasn't a Spitfire pilot so you know so the, the book is is a work of fiction but there he is and there he is arthur williams he was my dad's dad oh. and there was a, fond of another um person who was an inspiration an 89 year old veteran from a from a care home mm. um that he said because yeah bernard yeah he's sadly not with us anymore but he it was a new story at the time he escaped from an old people's home so he could go to the normandy um 70th anniversary of the normandy landings mm. And I think he was maybe a bit too scared to tell the people who run the nursing home that he was going or something in case they said they couldn't go anyway. And so he kind of escaped. He was like a missing person for a couple of days, but he was with his comrades in France. Oh, good for And him. that gave me an idea for a story. I thought, oh, an escape from an old people's home. Obviously, I made it really different in the book. And I made the old people's home this kind of, you know, awful place. And, 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 but but it, that, that was one of the ideas that fed into the book. So I always keep my eyes and ears open. That's why I tell lots of kids who yep. say, how would you get your ideas for your story? You just have to keep your eyes and ears open at all times. Well, that's what I was going to ask for this one, then, because this is a new one. This is The Beast of Buckingham Palace. And this is set in the future. This is mm. 2120. So your mm. imagination must have run riot with well, this one. I well, love, I love science fiction. You know, I loved uh, Star Wars and I still love it and Flash Gordon and things like that. And I thought, I thought what's my version of a science fiction story? Mm. And mm. I thought um, the last book was called The Ice Monster and that was, that was set in Victorian times. And I'm worried, you know, because I do write a lot of books and I'm worried that, I, you know, I don't want to repeat myself. So I think if I set myself a challenge like, OK, that's Victorian times, this is 100 years in the future, hopefully, you know, the books are not going to... There's nothing going to be re repetitive. Well, the, uh, the Prince is Alfred. Uh, yes. And uh, the name of your son, which That's is quite right. nice to be able to mm. immortalise uh, a mm. member of the family, which is lovely. Um, and, uh, and so this is uh, London, 100 years future. Uh, London is in ruins mm. and, uh, and, and Alfred... You're still Prince, alive. Prince, I'm still, yeah, <laughs> still on here. <laughs> You've had a lot of work done, but yeah, you're yeah. still alive. <laughs> um, and uh, and he is, uh, he's a sickly child in Buckingham yeah, Palace. Yeah, he's a sickly child in Buckingham Palace. And basically there's dark forces within Buckingham Palace. Um, to basically replace the king, and uh, there's there's a character called the Lord Protector who's trying to take over. So it's, it, and and there's also a sort of fancy element to the book where statues are being brought to life. So it's quite 
it's quite a sort of adventure story. And I thought Buckingham Palace would be a great place to set an adventure story because it's big, but it's also finite, isn't it? You know what I mean? And, of course, you could believe that there are sort of secret rooms mm. and, and cellars and that kind of thing. So and I that's because that I always think what's good about your writing as well for children is it's, it's not patronising because you understand that children, although they're young, they like, they like the challenges, they like a bit of darkness, actually, yeah, there and, as well. Yeah, and I think the best children's books are the ones you, you want to read under the covers with a torch and think they're a little bit forbidden. Yeah. And I always think my hero, Roald Dahl, you know, you read his books, they're actually incredibly dark and some of the humour is very, very dark. Yeah. But I think kids really like that. I think the mistake people often make is they think, oh, it's for kids, it sort of needs to be twee. Mm. And there but are twee things for kids, which are great, but I think a lot of kids like to have things with a bit of an element of danger in them. What, for you, is the, is the dream as far as the books are concerned? What, uh, what, what, what will you... When, when it happens, will make you think, ah, oh, actually, I've done very well? It's... I think if I'm walking down the street and someone comes up to me and says, oh, I used to read my books when I was a kid and now I read them to my um, kid. Yeah. But I haven't been writing books for long enough for that to happen, yeah. so... Oh, Do you read to Alfred? Uh, sorry? Do you read to Alfred? Yes, I do, but I, I don't make him just read my books because I kind of think I like him to choose. And also, I love reading other people's books, so I let him choose. I don't want him to be in therapy in years to come <laughs> saying, I could only read my dad's books. Over and over again. And also, I mean, your parents as well, you sort of like... <laughs> Yeah, there's stuff you do on TV and stuff, but you just want to be dad, don't yeah, you? Yeah, no, for sure. It's a bit sure. naff to go, let's watch me on TV, <laughs> let's read my book, you know. Um, he's actually only ever seen one bit of Britain's Got Talent, which was the time when my mum stepped in for Simon Cowell. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, she stepped yeah. in for about sort of an hour recording because Simon was, that day, was just seven hours late. And, um, <laughs> and so we've watched that bit because we like watching that bit as a family with my mum and my nephews. So he thinks that my mum is always on Britain's Got Talent as a judge. Ah, oh, long may that continue, <laughs> yeah. that. Um, so, so Little Britain, so mm. just to sort of put that to bed slightly, or is there going to be more? Could you do the TV? Yeah, could... well, we might, we might do. We're just talking about it at the moment. And Matt has his last night in uh, Les Miserables yeah. stage show tonight. So uh, we're meeting up very soon and talking about future plans. We did a special episode um, called Little Brexit because mm -hmm. we started on Radio 4, the show started on Radio 4. So, yeah, we'd love to do more and maybe do something new. So It's, um, it's also nice to be able to do something that's close to your heart um, in memory of someone who was very close to your heart because you've got two things on over Christmas, Cinderella Ever After, which is 60-minute Christmas special. Um, and, um, and then you've also got The Tiger Who Came to Tea on mm. Channel 4. Yeah, I'm really and, proud and, of that. And you were friends with... Judith Carr. I love Judith Carr. Yeah, she was such an inspirational lady. Her personal story is incredible because she escaped from Nazi Germany as a kid because her, she was Jewish and her father was, was quite a prominent Jewish person in, in Germany in the 1930s. Mm. So they had to escape. And, um, and she was sort of... She was living in London and then she wanted to write a story for her child and that became The Tiger Who Came to Tea. But she was really inspirational. I mean, she lived into her 90s and I remember going around her house and she would, like, run up and down the stairs like, oh, wow. much faster than I could. And she just had this wonderful dynamic energy and she loved life. And if the publishers, because we actually were the same publisher, which is how I met her, um, they had a party, she'd be, like, last to leave oh, and stuff really? like that. So well, she, she was great. an amazing life force. And so I'm sad she hasn't lived to see this. Mm. But there is this yeah. uh, wonderful... Um, TV adaptation, animated version of Tiger Came to Tea, which has got, also got Benedict Cumberbatch in. You've Amazing. Heard and Robbie Brilliant. Williams has actually done a song uh, for oh, a really? special song for it as well, yeah. And there it is. It makes me want to watch it now. I'm like, everyone could just... And you're narrating it, aren't you? I'm narrating it, yeah. It's also the animation of it, which is so Beautifully lovely. Beautifully done, and you can see it is incredibly truthful if you know the book. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's what I wanted truthful. to see. To yeah. see it's, just, it's just the, one of the most delightful books for children yeah. that I've ever read in my life. I actually didn't read it as a child, but I, I read it hundreds and hundreds of times mm. to my son because I loved it so yeah, much Yeah, it's as well. a lovely book. Well, let's hold up yours. Da -da 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 -da, all of them. <laughs> there we are. Those are the... Uh, it's just a, Do you mind holding up the rest of the show? <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't there. need it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a Thank pleasure. You. It's so nice to see, to see you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. We should say that uh, Grandpa's Great Escape Live tours arenas all over the UK this Christmas from the 23rd of December, including Wembley Stadium. Tickets are on sale now. And, uh, and you're also in Stratford with... Um, mm. uh, I'm everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, really are. Literally everywhere. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.